We are at the crossroads of history. This is what I believe. I know that in the past people might have thought similar, but we do have rigorous logical arguments for that. We have technologies that uh, could unite us, but that separate us. We have uh, things that we call artificial intelligence. And uh, this is something that's completely unique in human history. Always in the past, when there was a crisis of civilization, which we are now at, actually we are approaching, or we are at crisis of civilization, you would have a conflict, the, the society would resurrect and it would start it again. But uh, do we have this opportunity now? I'm afraid not. We are in such a critical situation, we are separating, and at the same time we are, uh, uh, we are a collective, uh, we are very much connected throughout the whole world. And if there should be a global conflict, uh, this is something that, that uh, just uh, we would not, might not be able to resurrect from. We can see the threats, what we are facing. We are facing the threats of being under dictatorship of uh, technologies, under the dictatorship of artificial intelligence. I can uh, say an example, in China is, is a great, um, well, great, uh, fortunately, not uh, an example, a strong example of what could happen. I don't know if you are aware, a few years ago, uh, there was a random choice of a name from, uh, from uh, uh, I'm not sure if it was Peking, or an area of 10 million people plus, and in three minutes, a drone had the person that was randomly chosen, had the person pointed out. This is the surveillance, this is the threat, this is uh, something that uh, we must uh, fight against for. We must protect our liberties, our liberties, our freedom, and this is why we are here. Now, this is the big threat, but at the same time, we have uh, huge opportunities, huge ad advantage uh, concerning the technologies. Each coin has the two sides, and I will speak about that uh, at the end of, of my talk. Now, um, seeing uh, the situation of society, this is the reason why I started uh, the Institute H21, H as humanity, humanity of 21st centuries. But I will just give you a brief introduction, a very few minutes of my history. I am a mathematician, and I have always been a mathematician since my early childhood, since my preschool years. I, I knew I would be a professor of mathematics or a mathematic re math researcher in mathematics. And I hope I make this work great. Now, um, when I um, became adult, I realized one thing. In today's society, even in democracy, even in free countries, we cannot be fully free if we are dependent on our means of, uh, of uh, existence. Every person needs to have the satisfied, the basic level of Muslim, uh, Muslim pyramid of uh, values. And I realized that in order, uh, in order, in order to have a freedom, uh, one must be financially independent. And that motivated me. That motivated me to uh, implement uh, my theoretical knowledge of mathematics into financial markets. And I started the company of RSJ. We were very lucky. We started market making in international derivative exchanges in the year 2002. And it was just the best timing because the financial markets were already very liquid. Uh, electronic trading was, was uh, the most uh, common trading at the time, but at the same time there was not much competition. So when we applied the theoretical knowledge of stochastic uh, calculus and uh, utility theory into trading on financial markets, we had such a great advantage that we became the most successful market maker in the world. On, in London International, uh, at that time, life. London International Financial Futures Exchange, later it merged, etc. A uh, few years after, we also became one of the largest market makers at Chicago Mercantile Exchange. The company was a huge financial success, and that uh, gave us and me uh, the opportunity to go further, uh, to support what I consider to be to one of the cornerstones, one of the most important pillars of human civilization, and that is science research and science. And I started an uh, endowment for support of research and science in the year 2009. And that worked great until recently. <laughs> uh, uh, but later, uh, actually uh, one or two years later, I realized that uh, what is happening in our societies is, uh, is a crucial threat to democracy, to liberties, and this is corruption. 
And I wanted to do, uh, because I'm a responsible person, uh, I wanted to, uh, I always wanted to solve problems or help to solve problems that I can see if I can do anything. And because I saw this threat, I decided to start the anti-corruption endowment. That was in the year 2011, anti-corruption endowment. That was a big step and I immediately became uh, popular among politicians. In fact, they, uh, many politicians hated me then and they also hate me now. And uh, there was a lot of, uh, lot of uh, done against me, uh, even uh, some constructed uh, accusations, etc. But they had no chance because fortunately RSJ, the business of RSJ is so clear cut, trading in international derivative exchanges is the most regulated business. So, so they couldn't make up anything, uh, they couldn't make up anything. Now, so uh, the anti-corruption endowment is still active until these years. I also, in fact, in total, I, I started six endowments. Uh, another endowment is the um, endowment of um, now Lilia and Karel Janicek. Lilia is my wife. I also started the endowment of for help, for helping people in needs. There is a small delay, yes. And I will also, last not, not, uh, but not least, I will mention uh, the endowment um, Science 21. Okay, Science 21 is a very special endowment that does research, that does research in, uh, about, of our thinking. We, do, we develop theories of thinking and in fact we have developed many, already quite some interesting products and theories uh, which uh, we don't have space here now, but this is uh, an endowment that I'm very proud of and that I also give a lot of time to. Now, one of the very important um, activities of my life maybe perhaps the most important, is the Institute of Age 21. It's the institute uh, I founded to support freedom and liberties, and also to implement and to support the innovative voting system D21, which I will be speaking about uh, today. We have done a lot of work uh, about freedom, about free societies, you have seen uh, the, the conferences here for freedom. Uh, we have already also introduced some of the books uh, and uh, I am very, uh, very happy to, um, this big delay indeed. <laughs> I have, uh, so we have already uh, talked about the trilogy starting with uh, John Stuart Mill and Nadine Strossen and Jeff McJama uh, <laughs> this uh, today. So I'm uh, very happy of these achievements of the Institute H21. And now I will be talking about the voting. What can we, uh, what can we say about the today's democracy? Unfortunately, I'm afraid that it is very inefficient. We can see, uh, not only in the Czech Republic, but uh, throughout the world, we can see that it pays off to lie, it pays off to manipulate. Uh, to manipulate. Uh, populists have a strong voice, very strong voice. And uh, people who want to live in truth, who do not want to uh, manipulate and lie, are at a distinct disadvantage. Why is that? One of the reasons is, well, obviously the one reason is that uh, we are overwhelmed with information. That's why it pays to manipulate and lie. Uh, and people are overwhelmed and it's easier for everybody to, have, uh, to just make the quick choice without uh, critical thinking, listen to, to what the populist says. But another reason also is that people are not motivated to do critical thinking, to think a little bit. Why? Well, this is, uh, this is the problem of the voting system in the, uh, today's world. In the US, uh, we have the voting, or in Great Britain, we have the first past the post voting system, uh, the winner takes all. It is democracy, but this is very inefficient democracy because it pays off to be a populist because the populist has a big chance to collect sufficient number of supporters and all the other candidates, they, uh, if there is enough of them, they do vote splitting and the populist wins. In fact, uh, Duvergen Law uh, says that, the con uh, that this voting system uh, implies that in the long run there will be only a two-party system, which is not very good. It is a version I would call 1.0 of, uh, of democracy. A little bit better, but not so much, is the voting system that we have, for example, in the Czech Republic. 
It is a proportional voting system. There are multiple parties. But again, each voter has only one vote. Political parties have a strong to say. Uh, people uh, have very little to say. They can just choose one party. Uh, populism pay, pays off. Not a good system either. There are uh, better voting systems usually uh, are more complicated. Uh, I don't know if you, if you know about the voting system. STB is a single transferable vote. Uh, it is certainly better than the proportional system, but uh, it is quite a um, paradox. Uh, it is a very, very complicated system. It is uh, very involved to understand it. And at the same time, given its complication, it is actually not a good system. So out of the complicated voting system, this is the worst one. And what is so funny about it, this is this paradox. This is this the, uh, perhaps the only vote complicated voting system that is being implemented in some political application. Like for example, in the US, in the state of Maine. So um, I can give more details why this system is actually inherently illogical and give systematically biased results against what would be a optimization or maximization of a social utility. We don't have time for that, but then, uh, I can give more information after that. Now, then we can have another voting system, version 1.0, uh, 1.9, and then there is, you can see the jump version 2.1 or 21. So there's a, there's a big upgrade. It's like an upgrade from DOS to Windows, going from version 1X to 2.1. And 2.1 is the voting system of D21. And I will explain to you how it works. It is a voting system based on the effect of multiple votes. Multiple votes does not mean only that, we have, that each voter has more votes. Yes, but this, is, this, is, uh, there is this effect means, by definition, that each voter has more votes than the winning candidates. So D21 is a general voting system, uh, precise definition you can find on the internet, but the main characteristic is that each voter has more votes than the winning candidates. So I will give you a simple example how it works um, to, to, to see immediately. So imagine uh, that we are a group of uh, a conference uh, participants and we decide to go for a joint dinner after the conference, and we do voting. It's fair, we vote which restaurant to choose. Each participant has one vote. That's the, that's the, uh, single, uh, that's the majority system, winner takes all. Now, uh, it, makes, uh, it is not surprising that there can be so-called vote splitting, Italian representative votes for Italian restaurant, Japanese or Japanese, etc., etc., and by bad luck, perhaps, there are two people who agree on going to McDonald's, right? So with this voting system, you might choose the, from total social point of utility, you might choose the best, uh, the worst result, which is McDonald's. That's the winner takes all uh, system where there is this so-called vote splitting, very inefficient way. Now, how does D21 work? D21 means that each voter has more votes than the, winning, uh, than the number of winning candidates. How many candidates are winning here? One. We go to only one restaurant. So D21 means that each has two votes. Now it is important, one vote per one restaurant. You cannot give two votes to, to the same restaurant, okay? So that's very important. And what might be the result of such a voting system? It could be, for example, here. So uh, the, um, the J Japanese participant gives his second vote to the Italian restaurant, for example, etc. So here we have uh, a realistic example where McDonald's does not get uh, any second vote, but another restaurant does it. In fact, uh, this example, um, of course, it's, a, it's an artificial example for, for the purposes of presentation. But let me say uh, that I was giving a presentation of D21 in the US, it was a few years ago. Uh, it was... Uh, Washington State University, and, uh, and uh, I was the participant were voting on the consensual drink that we would uh, offer after the conference. And uh, the, the funny thing is that uh, with one vote, there was a drink that would win. I think it was a beer. And with multiple votes, uh, the, the drink that was at the first place with one vote was actually the last one. So this is not so unrealistic example. Now, D21 
The most important feature is the effect of multiple votes, but we might have also the uh, vote against, we uh, call it minus vote. It is not necessary. The effects of D21 are there even without the minus vote, but the minus vote is also very useful. So um, here could be the result with the minus vote. As you can see, the minus vote further points out what we could call the, um, in politics, the extremist or populist choice. This is McDonald. McDonald receives uh, three minus one and a total number of minus one. Now, this was an example with a restaurant and now more, uh, more um, realistic voting. Uh, we have in democracy, uh, I do a simplification. Obviously, we know that the, the political preferences is a multi-dimensional system. But let's make an easy, a sim a simplistic projection towards a two-dimensional space where we have extreme left, extreme right, and consensual center. Now, um, it's a traditional voting system. We have uh, some proponents of the extreme left, some of extreme right, and the consensual voters. Um, unfortunately, it can easily happen uh, that the extremes have a big to say. Imagine that we have uh, two candidates, one of them extreme left, 15%, extreme right also 15%, and a lot of other candidates which are consensual, but there are a lot of them and uh, they, can, uh, do, uh, they can get the vote splitting, and it can easily happen that the extreme left and right win, or even the, in a two-round voting system, that extreme left and extreme right get to the second round and win in the second round. One of them wins in the second round. This is not unre unrealistic. If you remember, there was the case of um, French elections, I, I don't have, uh, a few years ago, um, and uh, there was, uh, it was, it could have easily happened with this standard, uh, with it, uh, one and a half standard deviations uh, that uh, Le Pen would advance to the second round with the extreme leftists. So it, there was a threat like that in a French election a few years ago. So, but um, the solution of the D21 is consensus. Here is a multiple vote system. Each voter has multiple votes. So what happens? Um, imagine that you are, that not you, but somebody is the extreme uh, right voter. Uh, the person uses one vote for, for his uh, preferred candidate and might have a second or third vote. How does he or she use it? Might not use it at all or might use it to some center, uh, center can candidate. Now imagine, uh, uh, on the other hand, that you are a voter of a consensual uh, candidate uh, you, and uh, you have three or you have two or three votes. So you use all your votes for the democratic candidates. You use uh, one for your first preference, but you also use your second for your second preference, etc. So what happens is that the consensual candidates now suddenly have much higher uh, voting power, much higher support than the extreme ones. The point being that the voter of the consensual candidate does not give uh, his or her second vote to the extreme left or extreme right. That's, that's the main important, that's the main feature of D21. Now, uh, this is a very brief uh, explanation of the theory behind. The theory is uh, there is more um, on a paper that I wrote uh, towards uh, analyzing the voting system. But I give you a practical example to, to, see, uh, to see how it works. Um, in 2017, uh, we have, uh, we started, uh, our institute started a game, a national game uh, we, that we called President 21. It was the president, last presidential elections of the Czech Republic. And this game was actually uh, very successful. We had, uh, <laughs> something happened to the slides. <laughs> so we had, uh, Almost 330,000 people uh, participating in the game. Uh, we had uh, 3 million votes, in fact, uh, in, in these games. Uh, we had, at the beginning, 617 candidates because uh, the game uh, lasted for one year and people were allowed to even not only vote, but also nominate candidates. It was a great success. 
in the last uh, last month or last two months of the game, uh, we ran the game for the official candidates, for the official presidential candidates. And these are the results. So, um, with one vote only, uh, remember, this was a game, it was not a representative sample. After I will show you the result for representative sample, this was the, the results of the people who participated in the game. And yes, the people who participated were more democratic people, more liberal, not uh, the proponents of, uh, of our current president so much, that is a person who separates society, as we will see uh, shortly. So, with one vote only, in the sample of people that participated in the game, you can see uh, that uh, Professor Drahoš was at the first place, and our current president, Mr. Zeman, was second. He was second, okay? And uh, also note uh, that the guy on the fifth place, that's, that's uh, uh, Hilscher, uh, Dr. Hilscher, who is also, by the way, a candidate, presidential candidate this time as well. So he's on the first, uh, fifth place, Zeman on the second. This was with one vote only. When we ran uh, with D21 with multiple votes, um, with three votes in fact, one winner, each person had three votes. Now, uh, you can see that Drahoš won and uh, Mr. Zeman got from the second place to the third one. Now, look at the votes that, that he got. He had, he had his number, his uh, certain number of uh, first votes only, he almost no one gave uh, Mr. Zeman his second or third vote. And that's the point. A candidate that separates uh, separate society does not get the second and third votes. That's the main idea of the D21 voting system. It finds consensus. It gives advantage to people who are consensual, who can unite society, who are not a choice of a uh, small fraction of uh, voters, separating society, but who are a consensual choice for other people as well. Now, uh, for example, Mr. Drahoj jumped from the fifth place to second, so there was this uh, flip. This is the result of um, non-representative sample. Here is the result of exit poll representative sample that we ran. Uh, there you can see that with one vote only, uh, Zeman is a clear winner, but with multiple votes, Zeman uh, does not win. Uh, the, the Professor Drahoš would have been a winner. So last presidential e elections, if we were using the, uh, the voting system D21, we would have had a different uh, Czech president. Now, D21 is a unique method to, for finding consensus. We have implemented D21 already on uh, many non-political applications, even in some companies. We have used D21 for participatory budgeting in uh, many cities, Czech, Slovak Republic, abroad in France, and also in some uh, uh, cities in Africa, and also in New York City. New York City uh, has been using uh, the voting system uh, D21 for, uh, for uh, its particip participatory budgeting in, uh, in most of the districts of, of New York City. It is a, si a system that supports consensus. It is a system that motivates people to learn more about uh, the candidates. Because you have to think about it, you have more, more votes. It's not just that you vote for one party, but you have more votes and people who are conscious enough and responsible enough are motivated to do some research or to make a better choice. Now, how does it work here uh, theoretically? Uh, we have um, imagined that we have uh, a different uh, political candidates who, whose uh, preferences are here. Uh, we might have a popular candidate. Popular candidate has, has many first preferences and nobody's against such a candidate. Well, popular candidate should win, should win under any democratic voting system. On the other side, unpopular candidate should lose with any voting system. What makes a difference? The difference among voting system is if the candidate is so-called polarizing or consensual medium candidate. Polarizing candidate is somebody who separates society. It's a person who has a strong support for uh, some percentage of people, but 
most of the other, or many people are against such a candidate. Polarizing candidate is the one who tends to win in the current voting system with one vote only. Medium candidate is a candidate that tends to win, uh, gets the advantage uh, with the voting system, D21, or more consensual voting system for that matter. We have also uh, done uh, simulations, uh, simulations of, uh, of the results, uh, measuring the social utility that different voting systems gives. Uh, well, in fact, what, is, uh, what should be the objective of um, democracy? Uh, we should maximize the well-being of the society. We should, um, we should maximize uh, st the so-called total social utility. I know we cannot measure it precisely. It is a theoretical concept, but nevertheless, it could be a very good model that we model the social uh, utility of the society by summing up uh, the, uh, the utility of each, uh, of each um, citizen. Now, um, in this situation, uh, we had uh, five candidates and we have uh, 42, it's not important, a uh, sufficient number of voters. And uh, we randomly assigned utility for each voter. So each voter has a random utility uh, for, for each candidate. And now we are in the simulation uh, result uh, showing or uh, looking at what is, uh, what is the strength, so what is the efficiency of each voting system. Now, uh, the yellow line is, is the maximum utility that we could achieve, the theoretical maximum utility. Uh, the bottom line is the minimum utility. If you were to choose the worst candidate that minimizes the so total social utility. So again, uh, each candidate has a different utility for each voter, and we are looking up at the sum of utilities uh, for, um, for each candidate. If we choose the worst candidate, the worst candidate gives the lowest total social utility, the sum of utilities of each voter. So it's down there. Now, um, uh, the, uh, the middle line, you, the kind of straight line, is, is the utility of a random choice. If out of the five candidates, we choose randomly one. That's, that's the straight line. Uh, the blue line, that is uh, at some point decreasing very quickly, is the uh, first past the post system, the winner takes all. Now, what is on the x-axis? Um, on the x-axis, we have the uh, polarization of each candidate. If the polarization is zero, all the candidates, uh, the, the candidates are not polarizing at all. The maximum polarization on the right-hand side, uh, maximum is seven, means that one of the candidates is totally polarizing society, okay? So, the more polarization, the worse result for most voting system. In fact, for the voting system first past the polls, for the, for the winner takes all voting system, you can see that if the polarization is high enough, the voting system gives worse result than a random choice. Well, why is that? Imagine we have one candidate which is extremely polarizing society, so there is... Um, 25% people for this candidate, 75% people against this candidate, and we have the other four constitutional candidates. But what, ha what happens uh, is that with the winner takes all voting system, there is the so-called vote splitting, so the polarizing candidate always wins, and the polarizing candidate uh, gives the worst utility in the, as a total sum. So, in fact, here, uh, democracy, voting with the first-past-the-post first voting system is worse uh, than a random choice of, of the representative, okay? So, this is the first-past-the-post, and now you can see how D21, how well it performs. Uh, D21, this the vote against, is, in fact, very close to the maximum utility all, all, all the time. That's the, uh, that's the gray line at the top. Now, let me wrap up uh, the uh, advantages of uh, D21. I can say, safely say that D21, political implementation in D21 is a cure for uh, modern societies. It is a cure against populism, against extremism. 
it doesn't pay off to lie so much. Why is that? Well, um, think about it. Um, if you are a candidate that is, uh, that is telling things that are reasonable, that are truthful, uh, there are many voters and many voters also use their brains in their decisions. And even if they don't agree with you, with all the aspects, you might be a second or third choice of them. So a person who is truthful, who is reasonable, has much higher chances because such a candidate is able to attract the second and third votes of, of the voters, which do not completely agree with him, but he is a reasonable candidate. On the other side, if somebody is a, a populist and liar, he gets his 21% uh, support, but he doesn't get any other support of the other uh, voters who are against him, okay? So those who are extremists, those who are populists, seriously weaken uh, under the voting system D21. Now, uh, the voting system D21 is very transparent and is very simple and very effective. It is effective. We have tested it in these participatory budgeting projects and also voting in NGOs and other opportunities. It is a system that people actually like very much. People are very happy to play the game. Imagine you have the portfolio of votes choosing uh, among different projects. And it is, it is motivational for you to think about whom you give your three votes, three up votes, and one minus one. It is, uh, democracy is becoming, um, yes, um, of course it's not fun, but it is good. It is good that the people like to vote. People uh, like to be able to choose more. People like to be able to say the whole sentence, not just one word. And it is very simple. And that's very good, that's very important. D21 also gives opportunity to small parties and independent candidates. Now. For that, um, I need to tell you a little bit uh, deeper. How does, the, and uh, what we could say, an ultimate version of D21 look like? D21 for, uh, for the parliament. The ultimate version uh, parameters of D21 is not one winner, but for the parliament is two seat voting districts. Okay, so imagine you have two seat voting districts and each voter has more votes than the winner in this application, or in a, a good number, it would be four votes. So you have uh, votes for parliament, you have um, districts, in each district two people win, and each voter in the district has four votes, can vote up to four people, one vote per one person, and also one vote against. That's kind of what we consider to be optimum for voting for the par parliament. Two seat voting districts, four up votes, and one minus vote. Now, if you think about it more, uh, uh, you, have, uh, you have the two-seat voting district. A candidate who is independent, who is new, who is fresh, who is surprising, has a very good chance to make it on the uh, second place uh, from the two-seat voting districts. That's why uh, for D21, uh, for the ultimate version, it is very good, uh, important to have more than just uh, one winner per district. So this is... Um, that independent uh, candidate can easily win, and also small parties have a chance. If a small party, even if it's a small party, but in the voting district has a candidate who is, um, who is, um, who attracts people, whom people like, so even small party can have a representative. Now, at the same time, um, there is a majority effect uh, for D21. Uh, it is not like a representative system. If we, even if we have uh, the two seat voting districts, it is likely that the consensual party, which is strong, may become even stronger. How does it sum up? At the same time, I'm saying that the small party has a chance uh, to have a representative, to have some candidates winning. And at the same time, I'm saying that the strong party that is, uh, that is uh, consensual it's likely to perhaps be even a little bit stronger because there is this uh, majority effect. We have uh, two winners per voting district. Well, uh, there, uh, it has to sum up. So the, 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 the who loses are those parties perhaps who would be in the middle and those who would be in the middle are non-consensual parties are likely to lose. 
those who are in the middle and are more consensual are likely to be even stronger. So what, what it also means, it, it means that there is so much more power for the voter and there is uh, so much more certainty for the political parties. A political party has to really try hard to be successful. It has to be consensual. It has to offer uh, good candidates to people to choose from. Uh, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, uh, well, it, what is the situation in uh, proportional systems like in the Czech Republic? You have a limited number of parties and people just give, have to give the lesser evil vote. They are very, most people are very unhappy with the votes. They don't like democracy because it is lesser evil. If you have D21 voting system, you vote for specific people, you can have the good choice. And even new people, newcomers, have a good chance if they are uh, sufficiently um, good, uh, sufficiently communicative, sufficiently consensual, uh, offer a good program to voters. Now, I have already talked about broadly how D21 weakens populism and extremism. Again, the logic is, if there is a populist who separates society, such a candidate does not get the second and third votes. So, uh, inherently is weakened. Same is true for extremists. Those candidates who are consensual, they get uh, their first supporters, but they have also some second and third uh, vote supporters. I already mentioned D21 greatly supports participation and activity of voters. Again, imagine you have, um, you have 21 candidates on the voting list of your region, it is uh, expected, it is reasonable number, because this D21 with multiple votes, Duvergen law will imply that there will be more offer. Political parties will offer up to two candidates, but there might be other independent candidates as well. So it is likely that there will be much more competition. So you have, um, so you have uh, 21 candidates, you think about it, uh, you narrow your choice to seven out of the 21, and then you have your three plus votes and you think, you do your research because you are motivated, uh, responsible voter is motivated to make a good choice. Unlike, again, unlike the standard situation as it is now, where we just vote for the lesser evil one political party. You don't need to do much research now. You just know that these parties are uh, not good. You choose the lesser evil, but that's it. But if you have more votes and you choose for people, uh, you, you read about their CV and you get so much more better representatives. So D21 is in fact connecting the advantages of, uh, of um, um, direct voting, voting for people um, with, the, with, the, with the representation because D21 does offer representation for the democracy. So it connects these, uh, uh, the advantages. Now, and last but not least, a big uh, advantage, positive campaigning. There is a big disadvantage of uh, democracy with the voting system as they are now. And this is negative campaigning, it's hatred, it's uh, going against your opponent. This is very profound in presidential elections everywhere even in uh, with the two-run voting system as we have in the Czech Republic. It just pays off to go uh, to find dirt against your opponents rather than uh, prom promoting the positive sides that you can offer. It pays the, uh, for the candidates, pays off uh, to find dirt against opponents. How is it with D21? Imagine there is a multiple of candidates Let's say now, let's talk about presidential elections, for example. Let's say you have 21 candidates for presidential elections, which with D21 would be realistic because of the voting system. It's not uh, like in the US, two candidates only. So you have quite a few t candidates. And uh, you, let's say you are a serious candidate. And you have your uh, core supporters, obviously. But if you want to win, you must be consensual. You must be able to attract also the second and third votes of, uh, uh, of, other, um, of your opponents. What will be your good uh, strategy? Well, the good strategy is to in fact promote your op op opponents in some sense. How would, what would you do? You will say, oh, uh, this is my candidate. I like this part of the pro program of my, uh, of my opponent. 
I do it even better, whatever, of course, you need to stress why you are better, but you will support at least part of the programs, at least some of your opponents, because you want uh, the voters of your opponents to give you their second and third votes. So democracy may become, um, even the campaign may become a process, a positive, creative process, but in fact the candidates can uh, try to offer better and better solutions to win. No negative campaigning, even with the minus vote, because the number of plus votes is significantly higher. And I think that this is uh, also a very important feature of D21, because we know that the campaigning is usually just a wastage of money, a wastage of energy, and uh, a big weakness of democracy. <sighs> Now, I already mentioned, I strongly believe that we are at the crossroads of history. Uh, D21 uh, may be a tool, a great tool uh, to improve our democracy, uh, to give us a better perspective, to unite society. And this is something that's absolutely crucial. People are separated and we have experienced, for example, with the global COVID hysteria, what has happened to people. People are separated, uh, people often hate, hate each other and it's within countries and also among countries. And uh, this is a big problem. This is, uh, this is uh, the negative side of the modern technologies where social networks are such that they separate people. In fact, uh, we were thinking at the beginning, internet came, that's great, we can communicate, we can, uh, we can connect, uh, we can cooperate. But what happened is that because of the algorithm of the social networks, people are more and more separated. And the reason are just because uh, social networks want to maximize profit, so uh, there is the logic of that they, social networks uh, give you information that confirms your biases and it makes them even stronger. So the artificial intelligence, in order to maximize the profit, in order to maximize clicks, it separates people even further. Now, uh, this, is a, this is a big problem. Uh, at the same time, it is the first time in human history that we have the technologies and we have, again, the internet communication. Uh, in principle, we might be able to cover the basic, uh, the basic uh, levels of Maslow uh, pyramid of values for each person. In the past, it was never the case in known human history because in order for 5% of people to live a good, uh, luxurious life, the 95% of people had to work hard and were abused. Inherently unstable system. We have a chance now to overcome this. We, can, we have a principle, in principle, we can use our technologies uh, to do the hard labor for people and uh, we have a chance to use technologies to do right communication. We have the chance to use the blockchain technology, which is something uh, decentralized, completely independent. We can envision a society which is working on a decentralized system where in fact the governments might have smaller and smaller um, effect on human society. The greatest value of today is human attention. And I can envision a society which is decentralized, where, where the value of, uh, of um, the human attention is the greatest value. And we, there is a, there, we can, uh, of course, it is, it is, we can imagine a system which is locally stable, which is a Nash equilibrium, which is working great. The question is how to get there. But in princi principle, we can do that. At the same time, we have uh, these threats that I already mentioned, the threats that uh, the artificial intelligence can control us. So uh, I consider today to be uh, the time of um, decision, what we do further, if we, uh, if we are able to protect our liberties, if we are able uh, to unite within a country and also uh, countries uh, globally. And in fact, I, I take this responsibility uh, further, further uh, to um, that uh, this is why I decided uh, I am also running for the presidency of the Czech, Czech Republic, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, a great opportunity. Because in the Czech Republic, uh, the presidential system, it is not a presidential system. The president does not have much power. That's very important. 
very little power. But the Czech president has a lot of influence. So I have, um, I have a vision how to uh, unite society, how to uh, inspire people towards, uh, towards a change within the country and in the next step also um, uniting uh, political leaders uh, globally. And let me say just uh, two sentences in Czech for Czech people. Já bych uh, velmi rád požádal všechny lidi, kteří sdílejí hodnoty svobody a pravdy, demokracie, všechny lidé, aby mě podpořili, aby mě podpořili v mé kandidatuře, protože já mohu dát závažný prezidentský slib, že pokud budu zvolen, tak se mi podaří udělat tu počáteční energii, změnu pro, uh, pro naši zemi a sjednotit společnost. A ten důvod, proč můžu dát tento závazný prezidentský slib, je ten, že to nejtěžší, abych byl zvolen, protože když se podíváte na preference, já bych měl být o totální outsider. Není tomu tak. Šance jsou velké, ale záleží na tom, kolik lidí se mi podaří získat jako srdcaře, kteří mi dají veřejně svoji podporu. Já v současné době nehledám a nehledal jsem nerozhodnuté voliče. Hledám, propojuji se s lidmi, kteří, kteří věří tomu, co říkám, kteří chápou tu logiku mé, mé a našich vizí a jsou ochotní mi podpořit. Takže ti z vás, kteří souzní s, s mými hodnotami, prosím, podpořte mě a vězte, že je na mě milion předsudků, absurdních, nesmyslných předsudků, kteří bohužel mají chytří lidé. A já vyzývám každého, kdo mi z nějakého důvodu nevěří, kdo si myslí, že, že dělám něco špatně, prosím, komunikujte se mnou. Rád se, rád diskutuji i s těmi lidmi, kteří se mu zásadně nesouhlasí. Děkuji a prosím, podpořte mě. Máme obrovskou šanci. OK, thank you so much, dear ladies and gentlemen. And this is the vision of H21. What is H21? It's an upgrade. Uh, we are uh, living here. What is the core essence of our life? It's water. It's H to zero, right? H2O, H to zero. Now, uh, we are humans, we have our brains, we have thinking, we have our emotions. Well, let's call our energy, our uh, common existence, let's call it uh, H to one, human of the 21st century. Thank you so much. All right, well, thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, our last speaker has a TV interview, so we only have time for one question for Carol. So is there, is there a question? Uh, perfect. Um, I consider myself a political psychologist, and I, I totally like the D21 system. Uh, I'm wondering whether you are able also to give a similar presentation or write a paper on what are the obstacles and how can the obstacles be overcome of this, of this, for this system to be introduced? Because I believe it gives people empowerment yes. mm -hmm. and it will make them happier. So, But uh, what are the obstacles and how to overcome uh, So you mean weaknesses, weaknesses of the voting system D21? No, no. obstacles to have, it, have that system introduced. Oh, uh, I, I um, understand the system. I mm -hmm. have seen it actually mm -hmm. applied once, and uh, I was very pleased with the yes. result, with both the empowerment and, and the happiness mm -hmm. of the people mm -hmm. after that. But what are the obstacles for this to be implemented. system to be introduced? Uh, and how can the obstacles be yes. overcome? Yes, yes. Uh, the, the biggest obstacle is that it is not advantageous for the politicians who are in their position in order to maximize their power. It is a voting system that gives so much more power to voters. And uh, politicians must be responsible, uh, they must do their work in the interests of, of people. Uh, so, and this is not a motivation for most of them. Uh, so, um, so the way, uh, so this is, so that's the, in fact, most difficult obstacle. Uh, in the Czech Republic, in order to change the parliamentary voting system towards D21, there has to be um, a constitutional change, in fact. So this is uh, three-fifths, so it's even more uh, difficult. Uh, the way uh, to overreach uh, this obstacle is uh, uh, to make uh, the grassroots movement, uh, to explain to as many people as possible so that a uh, sufficient number, sufficient percentage of population wants such a change. It is true for any country, and then we have a chance. 
There is an easier way for the United States, by the way. Of course, there is uh, no um, ambition to change the uh, two-party voting system in the United States. That would be too difficult. But in order to get most of the effects of D21, it would be enough to change the voting system uh, in parties. Okay, so each party uh, changing the voting system, how party chooses their candidate, that's not so difficult. Each party has a free choice for that. So as soon as uh, one party, either Democrats or Republicans, decide to use D20 VAR for choosing their candidate, they get a significant advantage, a really big advantage, because uh, in principle, they would choose a candidate which is much more consensual. So the candidate chosen by D21 being Democratic or Republican Party, has a much higher chance to win in the two-party battleship uh, afterwards. So as soon as one party decides to choose the D21 for, the party, uh, for their choice, the other one will be uh, forced to use it as well. And then we will have two reasonable candidates competing. In total, it's not the absolute optimum, but it is very close to the optimum. So in fact, the implementation for the United States could be much easier. Okay, so once again, thank you very much, Dr. Janicek. Thank you. Thank you.